Good morning, everybody. Um, I am so excited to worship with you this morning and to lift our praise together. In Psalm, it talks about how we are commanded to praise the Lord. And so I invite you all to do that this morning.
confess to save the lost grace and mercy displayed upon the cross our redemption is the hope for all mankind one name over everything one name Well, good morning. I bring uh, greetings from my church, Emmanuel Nashville. If you find yourself in Nashville at any point uh, on a Sunday, we'd love to have you join us. We have a few um, former Cedarville students uh, worshipping with us who've graduated, and we uh, love welcoming you. So do come and say hi if you're ever in town. We're in Ephesians 6. Um, There are times when you you need to be in continuous contact with someone. I had a friend who was uh, coming to visit me in Nashville. He He lived out in a kind of rural part of Kentucky. He wasn't used to driving in the city. 
And so he was kind of anxious about that. So I had him share his location with me, put me on speakerphone, and I kind of tried to sort of navigate him in, just kind of reassure him and help him find his way to my house. Uh, another occasion, a different friend was, was walking home. He lives in a, a different part of the country to me. But he was having to walk through a slightly kind of dubious neighborhood, felt a bit anxious, so he just gave me a call and I said, I'll just stay on the phone until you get home. Um, I want to know that you've made it back so safe and sound. If it, if it helps to have someone on the phone during a slightly nervous time, then, then keep me on the phone. And obviously in movies, the, 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 the secret agents or the first responder always has the backup people in his ear, kind of directing him, showing him where to go, giving him all the help that he needs. There are times you need to be in continuous contact with someone. And it turns out the Christian life is one of those times. Uh, yesterday in Ephesians 6, we were looking at the fact that we were in a spiritual battle. Uh, whether we like it or not, whether we would have chosen it or not, whether we believe it or not, we are now in the midst of a spiritual battle. Uh, this world is not going to be an easy place to be a Christian. And so we need to be in constant contact with God. And that's what we're going to be thinking about this morning. Um, we're going to look at the next bit of Ephesians 6. Paul has been outlining the various parts of the armor that God has given us. And he now brings us to prayer in verse 18. Not as a further item of armor, but as an essential accompaniment to all of the armor. So let me just read from verse 10 down to the end of the chapter. Paul writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I might declare it boldly as I ought to speak." So that you may also know how I am and what I'm doing, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I've sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. This is God's word. I want to think about verse 18 in particular. If you look at verse 18, Paul gives us four alls. He says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication, with all perseverance for all the saints. I want us to think through those four alls as we think about prayer this morning. So here's the first one. Paul tells us to pray at all times. So again, he says, praying at all times in the Spirit. Paul says we are to pray in the Spirit. What that means is it's not that there's prayer in the Spirit, which is kind of really amazing prayer, and then there's just regular Christian prayer. No, what distinguishes prayer in the Spirit from other prayer is that prayer in the Spirit is prayer that's Christian. All Christian prayer is in the Spirit. Uh, Paul has shown us already in this letter back in Ephesians 2, uh, verse 18, uh, when I can turn that pesky page over that would help uh, Ephesians 2 verse 18 Paul says for through him Jesus we both Jew and Gentile have access in one spirit to the father our whole Christian life is lived through the son to the father by and in the spirit 
Uh, that is all of our discipleship. How we pray is through Jesus to the Father by the Holy Spirit. So when Paul is saying pray at all times in the Spirit, he's saying pray as a Christian. Pray within the framework of the gospel. Pray because you now can pray in the name of Jesus. And this Christian prayer is to happen at all times. Uh, again, Paul says praying at all times. So here's the thing, there is never, ever a bad time to pray. That just doesn't exist. Uh, no matter what you're going through, it's always a good time to pray. Uh, James says in James 5 verse 13, is any of you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Whatever you're going through, pray. A guy I know who fishes once told me there are, there are two signs that you need to keep fishing. The first sign is the fish are biting. That means keep fishing. The second sign is the fish aren't biting. So keep fishing. And it's a bit like that with prayer. If things are going really well, that's a sign you need to pray. If things are difficult, that's a sign you need to pray. Pray at all times. Doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter who you're with. So, I don't know how this works here on, on campus with you guys, but let's never make it weird just to pray with someone. Let's just make that normal. We're, we're having a conversation about something that, that matters to us. Well, let's, let's just quickly pray about it as well. Let's not treat it like, well, that's a super spiritual thing to do. Uh, Michael Scott says he isn't superstitious, he's just a little stitious. So let's treat praying with each other like it isn't super spiritual, it's just, a, it's just a little spiritual. It's just normal. It's just what we do. Let's help each other to pray at all times. We can do that. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter who you're with, it doesn't matter how you feel. However you are feeling, pray. The Psalms show us that we can pray whatever our emotional state. The Psalms are great at helping us for that. So Paul says there's never a bad time to pray. Let's pray at all times. And what that means is there is never a time when God doesn't want to hear us pray. There's never a time when God isn't available to hear us pray. Now we tend to think, well, if I've had a great day as a Christian, at the end of that day, God is all ears. And if I've had a lousy day as a Christian, and we sort of think, well, I just, I don't know if I can pray today. But we don't pray on the basis of how good a Christian we've been in the last few hours. We pray on the basis that Jesus has given us his name in which to pray. The Father has adopted us. He's not less our Father at the end of a lousy day. And so we have, if you like, through Jesus, praying rites before our Father. So let's pray at all times. God is open for prayer at all times. If it's the middle of the night, pray. If you just landed the, your dream job after school, pray. If your life has just fallen apart, you're, you're kind of someone who just head over heels in love with you has just, has just broken up with you, pray. If you've just sinned, pray. Pray at all times because we have access to God at all times. Secondly, Paul says we should pray at all times with all prayer. So verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Uh, Paul uses more than one word for prayer because there is more than one kind of prayer. Uh, there are joyful prayers of, of celebration, of gratitude, of victory. There are sad prayers of, of confession, of lament, of defeat. There are short prayers and there are long prayers. There are some prayers where you're Sending up a quick prayer in the moment, a kind of flare gun, Lord, I need your help right now as I walk into this difficult situation. There are long prayers that you might even set aside time for. You might not even have a little a spot somewhere on campus that you go to pray 
when you want to pray for, for longer periods of time. There are short prayers and long prayers. There are big prayers and small prayers. God can cope with praying, you praying for big things. We should pray for big things. Uh, there may be some very, very significant needs in your life or in the life of people close to you. I have two or three friends right now who are going through unimaginable grief and I'm praying big prayers for them because only God coming in for them is, is gonna get them through this. As we look at our, our culture, our, our society, as we look at so many things in the world around us, we wanna pray big prayers. We want to see justice. We want to see the overthrow of evil. We want to pray for the end of the porn industry. That's a great thing to pray for. We can pray big things. James chapter four, verse two says, you do not have because you do not ask God. We get to ask God for anything. And God in his wisdom will, will always give us as is wise in his eyes. Uh, Tim Keller once said that God will either give you what you asked for or he will give you what you would have asked for if you knew everything that he knows. But we can and we must pray for big things. Uh, several years ago, uh, the airline WestJet did this kind of thing over Christmas, the Christmas period, and it's one of these little videos that, that then got kind of shared and went viral and, and everyone got to see it. But they did this thing where there was a particular flight and in the, in the, the boarding gates for this flight, they had set up this kind of interactive machine type thing where the idea was you would, you would go up to the machine, you would scan your boarding pass, Santa would appear on a screen and kind of ask you by name what you wanted for Christmas. And it's kind of like, everyone thought it was just this gimmicky thing, and so people, nothing else to do in the boarding gate while they were waiting, so people played along and scanned their things, said, oh, I'd like, I'd like a big widescreen TV, or I'd like flights to Florida to go and see my mother next year, or one guy said, I'd like a pair of socks, you know, and it was all a kind of a bit of a joke. And then the flight takes off, and then what we see is, at the city they're flying into, WestJet staff are now fanning out across the shopping malls, buying every single thing people asked for. And when the flight lands and they go to the baggage claim, before their, their, their baggage arrives, wrapped gifts appear on this, on this baggage belt with their names on. And so these passengers sort of stood there going, oh, what, what on earth is this? And opening up and it's the very thing they'd asked for. And it's amazing, it's one of these beautiful kind of scenes where, you know, everyone shares it because you all feel kind of moved and Christmassy and it's a, it's a great kind of thing. And you've got this guy there with this massive TV, you've got this, this lady who's now got plane tickets to go and see her mother next year. And it's beautiful. But then you think about the guy with his socks. <laughs> and he stood there kind of going, hey, I've got my socks. And you're thinking, how much of an idiot must he feel like in that moment? He's looking around at what everyone else has gone. And yet I wonder if, if him standing there with those socks is a picture of my prayer life. Could have asked for anything and he went for socks. You do not have because you do not ask God. We can pray for big things. We can also pray for small things, friends. We can bring even the, the small details of our lives to God. He, he's not so important that he doesn't care about those things. There's something relatively trivial that's bugging you. You can pray about that. There are also prayers when we know what we're trying to say and prayers where we just don't. Prayers when we know exactly what it is we're asking for and how to ask for it. Prayers where we just think, Lord, I, I can't even wrap my head around the situation. I don't even know how to pray. I just need to know that I need you. 
Well, even those inarticulate prayers get heard. As uh, the the theologian J.I. Packer used to say, God fixes our prayers on the way up. So even if we're stammering out something completely muddled and confused, God hears it. It gets through to him. So we're to pray at all times, we're to pray with all prayer. Next, again in verse 18, Paul says we're to pray with all perseverance. He says, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance. We need to keep alert because prayer requires wakefulness. Prayer requires alertness, not the kind of Red Bull kind where you're kind of now kind of on edge, but there's a kind of gospel alertness that we get through faith in Jesus. The gospel opens our eyes to the world in which we find ourselves. We become aware that the hour is dark. We we become aware that the time is short, that the need is great, and we become aware that the Lord is near. We now walk around the world with that awareness. And Paul is saying we need to have our wits about us when we pray. Uh, Back in chapter 5, Paul wrote these words. I'll read from verse 15. Paul said, look carefully then at how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We need to stay alert. Being spiritually sluggish won't help us pray. It's why it is good, as we were thinking about yesterday, to to receive and to meditate on the truth every day because every day we need to have our minds reawakened to the spiritual realities in which we find ourselves. If we're not regularly having that input of truth, we will stop seeing the world as it really is. We will be spiritually sluggish and that will affect our prayers. Paul says, keep alert with all perseverance. Prayer is going to involve perseverance. We know that. The fact that we find prayer difficult shows that that's that's normal. You don't have to persevere with something that is easy and automatic. We have to persevere with prayer because it takes work to pray. Uh, Jesus gave us one of his parables just for this very reason. In Luke 18, we're told, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Jesus assumes we can lose heart when we pray. That we will get discouraged. There will be times when we want to give up. And so he gave us the parable of the persistent widow in Luke 18 to help us keep praying. If you know the parable, it's about this, this widow who keeps hassling this unjust judge until he does the right thing. She just wears him down. And the point of the parable is that God isn't like the judge. God isn't someone who needs his arm twisting to do the right thing. And if persistence works with someone who's a rat bag like that judge, how much more is persistence going to be affected with a God who actually loves to answer our prayers? We have even more reason to persist. But in our minds, we think God is reluctant and that we're just being an unwanted hassle. Now, I I moved officially to America at the beginning of this year. I finally got a visa, shipped my stuff over, turned up, hey, I live here now. And, uh, you know, what do I need to, what's next? What do I need to figure out? You need to get social, your social security. Okay, right figure out how to do that. There's hoops to jump through, forms to fill out, stuff to sort out. So I get all of that ready. I drive to the local social security authority and think, this is, this is great. You know, here I am. I'm ready to join the country and they'll be pleased to see me. <laughs> Took my number. It was, you know, 7,000 and something and they were still on. 403 at that point. So I thought, okay, this, well, we can wait. This is okay. This is important. I'll, I'll sit here and wait and read three whole novels while I wait. <laughs> Finally, my number came up, so I presented myself to the, to the appropriate window and said, hey, I just moved here. You don't have to thank me, but I just moved here. But anyway, and here's my, here's my stuff for me to get a social security number. And uh, the lady behind the window just immediately barked back, do you have a whatever form? I was like, no one, 
no one mentioned that thing to me. I've not heard of that form. I've got all the stuff the website said I needed. She said, well, you need a thingy form. So how do I get one? She said, well, just go over there and, and fill it out and then take another number and wait. And we kind of think God's a bit like that. That we're just bothering him by coming before him with our needs and prayers. By the way, I did have one idea after that that long, long day at the Social Security Authority, which is, why don't we pay the staff there in the same way that we pay, like, waiters? So you you have to be nice so that you get a good tip. I might, I might run for office just on that one, on one, one policy. They have to be nice to you. So here's what Jesus does. When Jesus wants us to keep praying and not lose heart, he reminds us what God is like. God isn't like that unjust judge. God isn't like going to the social security authority. God loves it when you show up. God loves it when you show up with need. God is more ready to hear your prayers than you are to offer them. And so Jesus assumes the reason we don't pray more isn't because we don't have time. It's because we've forgotten what God is like. In Revelation chapter five, when John is given this beautiful vision of of the throne room of God, he, he says there were golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Our prayers are a fragrance to God. Okay, if you're, if you're someone who does the whole scented candle thing, I don't know if you're allowed to do that here, or you know, nice oils or whatever it is, you like the nice smells going on in the background, that is what our prayers are like to God. So when we turn up with, with our whole heap of need and, and prayer requests, God is not rolling his eyes. God is not the one who needs to persevere. God hasn't had enough of your prayers. Now, it's often, uh, I find in sermons on, on prayers, when, when the preacher will say, you know, who, who here as a parent doesn't love giving their kids good things? And that's true and that's right, but, but here's the thing. The very best parents I know have limits. So yeah, when... when your little child comes up and says they need something and you go, oh, well, I'm the, I'm the parent. I love to give you the thing that you need. If they're doing that every 10 minutes through the entire night, you have limits. You have limits to how much capacity you have for being asked for stuff by your kids. God doesn't have that limit. God is never saying, this is, this is just too much for now. Can you just leave me alone for a couple of hours? No, we are the ones who need perseverance. And we find it when we remember what God is like. God will never change. We can always come before him. So here's something that I I know I need to keep hearing on repeat. Maturity in the Christian life, growth in the Christian life is, is needing Jesus more not needing Jesus less. If you're finding you've got even more needs to bring before the Lord, that's a sign of growth. We're meant to. So let's keep persevering in prayer. And finally, Paul uh, encourages us to pray for all the saints. Um, I've got my Bible open at Philippians, which isn't helping me. So Ephesians. Uh, 6 verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So here's what we need to know. There is not a Christian today who doesn't need prayer. Every single child of God needs prayer. So never assume that someone else you know is sorted. Never assume, well, that person, they they seem to have their Christian life together. They're doing great. They don't really need anything. All of us need prayer. 
Uh, when you say to someone, hey, is there anything I can be praying for? And they, they kind of turn around and say, no, not really. They either don't know just how much spiritual need they have or they just don't feel comfortable telling you. But they do need prayer. Now, Paul is a great example for praying, of praying for all Christians. Uh, in all of the letters Paul writes, we see him praying for the people that he writes to. He even writes out the things that he's praying for. Uh, in Ephesians alone, there are two prayers that Paul prays for them. So if you're wondering how to pray, a great starting point is, to, is just to track some of Paul's prayers and look at how he prays for people. Uh, we see Paul praying for Christians he doesn't really know. Uh, he'd never met the Colossians, but he still prays for them. So you have in Colossians a model of how to pray for a Christian you know very little about. Uh, in the book of Romans, just hearing about the Christians in Rome is enough to make Paul pray. Just their existence means, oh man, I've got to pray for them. Paul is a great example of praying for all the saints. Paul is also a great example of asking for prayer. And he does that in many of his letters. Even an apostle needs prayer. Again, we need Jesus more the further down the Christian road we go. And so Paul asks for prayer here. He, prays in, he asks in verse 19, he says, pray also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So he asks for prayer for two things. He asks for prayer for words that words may be given me in opening my mouth. Paul is saying, I need God to help me say the right thing. That's a great thing to pray. He asks for prayer twice here for boldness. Paul needs boldness because it's not easy sharing the gospel. You can get in trouble. Paul did. It's actually amazing. Paul says, I'm here in chains. Paul is right there in prison because he has been preaching the gospel. And what's amazing is Paul is not saying, hey, can you pray for me to be released? Can you pray that these chains would be removed? No, Paul instead says, can you pray for boldness? Because Paul is more concerned that the gospel is preached than that his life is easy. We need to pray for all the saints because no one is beyond the loving attention of God the Father. When God looks at his people, he doesn't have, he doesn't have favorites. He doesn't have kind of types that he, he, he likes more than others. We are to pray for all the saints because God loves answering prayer for all the saints. So how do we do this? How do we be people who pray at all times, with all prayers, with all perseverance for all the saints? And I had some things written down here about, you know, we can be more disciplined and when we get up and our routines and planning and all these things, and I crossed it all out. Because I realized the, the best way of doing what Paul is telling us to do is to realize Jesus is already doing it. In Hebrews chapter seven, verse 25, we're told of Jesus, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus right now prays at all times with all prayers, with all perseverance for all the saints. So the best way for us to become people who pray like that is just to keep looking at him. Let's look up and see Jesus doing this very thing. And that will, that will move our hearts to do the same thing because the more we stare at Jesus the more like him we become.
Let's have a moment of quiet and then I will pray for us. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus always lives to make intercession for us. That even now, Jesus is serving us. Even now, Jesus is active on our behalf. Even now, Jesus is praying for all of us. Father, with the eyes of our hearts, help us to see him. And the more we, we see him, the more we, we gaze upon him, may we become more like him. And may our own hearts become hearts that, that want to pray at all times, with all prayers, with all perseverance for all the saints. Because it's a lovely way of being more like Jesus. Father, where we have a, a small, shriveled view of God, please correct us. Where we think that you're too busy, too aloof, too important, to want to hear us, please correct us. Help us to see your heart for us. To know how welcome our prayers are in heaven. How fragrant they are before you. How much our need doesn't deplete you or wear you out, but how... You are the one who is all sufficient for us. How you love to hear our prayers more than we love to offer them. Father, as we go out into this world, as we go out into this spiritual battle, may we do so in constant communion with you in constant prayer contact with you. Thank you that we have that amazing backup through every moment of our lives. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Good to see you.